You are listening to Know You're Crazy. My name is Susan Dene. We all have crazy. What separates us is how we choose to deal with it. I'm going to be delivering engaging and actionable tools to own your crazy, treat your crazy, and turn it into your own superpower. I hope that you walk away from this show feeling the power and strength within you. And never forget to enjoy your journey because you are worth it. Hey everyone, welcome to the Know Your Crazy Show. My name is Susan Dene, and you are listening to Emotional Recovery in the Raw. And it has been a bit. I have been a busy person for a few weeks. And thankfully to Transformation Talk Radio, they have been doing replays for me each week. But this week I'm on, and I gotta tell you, it had to be a deliberate decision today because I didn't want to, and not that I don't love everybody who listens to the clips or who's tuning in, but man, some weeks are like that. Uh, So that got me thinking this morning when I was tossing around ideas for the show and what to talk about. You know, in sobriety, there's many opportunities to change it up. In fact, I encourage people I work with in sobriety to make sure that they are changing it up, Because otherwise, what can happen is we can fall prey to depression or the lull when we feel like we're aimless in life. Um, It can happen to the best of us. But what happens when it falls on one of us who are sober can be kind of scary. Uh, Because what can happen is a drink or a drug might sound like a good idea. Maybe it'll enhance the life moment. You know, there are moments in an alcohol recovered alcoholic's life where I think we do kind of miss it every now and then. At least I do. Uh, Every now and then I'll be at a work conference or some professional gathering and people will be mingling and talking and, you know, BSing over a drink and laughing. And I kind of get a little bit envious at times, like sober envy or something about, you know, I wish I could let my hair down a little bit like that. And sometimes those social circumstances can make it feel a little tough. So there are times when a drink might sound good, but I have to tell you, if and when those moments arise, arrive, I have to remind myself of different things that I can do, different decisions I can make so that I don't ever go down that path. And there's different types of decisions in sobriety. There might be the big life moment, change everything, uh, set my life on a course in a brand new direction type of decision. And then there's the small seemingly day-to-day decisions. You know, do I go to a AA meeting today? Do I not? Uh, did I, you know, practice something new or did I not? And then there's the, you know, the back to the real large decisions. Am I ready to upheave my complete professional journey and try something new in my 40s type of decision? Uh, the reason why this was on my heart also, not only because I was dragging a little bit today, I have had no caffeine today, guys. That, that's a big deal for me. I'm not trying to not have caffeine. I'm having to do this test for the body, you know, get some measurements going. And you're supposed to do this test without caffeine. So all day, all day, no caffeine. That is not my norm. I enjoy my caffeine. Uh, I love coffee and I haven't had any. So I'm a little bit, um, I think I'm almost even a little bit foggy. I can't even remember where the hell I was just talking about. Okay, back to decisions. That's what I was talking about. All right, so let me just let me just kick it kick start this stuff. So how does a sober person avoid becoming emotionally stalled and therefore intrinsically lifeless? If we want to have a new experience in life, we must make a new decision. Yet that can sometimes feel overwhelming and pointless. How do we do it? And why should we do it? Is it time for you to make a new decision in your life? If so, pay attention today because that's what I'm going to be talking about. That's what I was saying. What happened for me that really inspired uh, this show today was I recently went back to my home state of Nebraska and was working on some things there professionally. And then I drive. I drive to Nebraska from Washington. I drive it quite often, mainly because I need my car. And I don't like paying rental prices nowadays. I'm kind of frugal like that. But when you drive, like if you're used to long distance drives, it's not really that big a deal to me. I make it in two days, no big deal. But what that gives me is an opportunity to kind of listen to what I want to listen to on, you know, whether that's a YouTube or whether that's a, you know, I'm not real into audibles. My mind tends to jump around, but I'll listen to it. There's a couple audibles I can do. Uh, But I have this 
moment of awareness uh, about a couple of things in my life and, and where I've been and decisions that I have made um, that I've been making for many years, like the same decision uh, for over 15 years. And there's been a lot of wonderful outcomes as a result of that decision. Um, and I've had a lot of wonderful people come into my life as a result of that decision. Uh, but I think it's time to change it up. And so this literally is a decision that I've made that I'm going to completely let go and head in a brand new direction for the first time in, I think, over 15, 16 years in this one area of my life. Um, and I, I'm pretty excited about that. Yet it was such a monumental moment of clarity that I was fully aware that like, life is kind of all what I'm going to make it. Life is what you're going to make it. Um, and when life gets a little bit, I don't know, static, a little boring, maybe you fall into some self-pity, thinking that things aren't doing you well, if only this would change. You know, as always, if you guys have been listening to, to me for a while, I'm a real big believer on turning that magnifying glass inward and saying, what needs to change within me? And when I came to this clarity on the road as I was driving, I thought, yeah, I'm done doing that. I'm like, I'm done doing that. And I think I'm done doing that for a long time. Like this may, maybe it'll be for a year or two, but I, I really think I'm going to relinquish that one thing that I've been doing uh, with dedication and all this effort for many, many years. I think I'm going to stop doing that. And the reason why I decided to stop doing this thing is because it no longer brings me joy like it used to. You ever... Have you ever uh, done something past its expiration date? It no longer brings you joy. And you get stuck in the, and, and, and I'm careful to say stuck in the same routine because this one dealt with you know, helping others. Um, but, you know, kind of doing the same routine over and over and over and it's no longer fulfilling you. And it's time to change it up. I remember watching Dr. Phil years ago. Dr. Phil, if you guys remember Dr. Phil, uh, he was talking about major decisions in someone's life. And he said, and I'm completely paraphrasing because I may not remember this point on, but I get the gist of it. Usually in a person's life, there are three to four monumental decisions that completely change the trajectory of their life. So when you reflect back in your life, there are, in his opinion, three or four major decisions that really catapulted you in a whole new direction. Uh, like one for me was leaving the state of Nebraska at, at like 19 years old, moving to Arizona, but getting out of my upbringing state and moving on. It brought me into brand new cultures. It brought me into a large uh, cities. It opened my eyes to new opportunities, the way that other people did things. Um, it was one of the best decisions I ever made was not anything. I still go back to Nebraska all the time now. So I love Nebraska, but I'm glad I got out of that environment so that I could experience something new. Um, you know, eventually we went from Arizona up to Washington State, and that's been a fantastic experience, too. But it wasn't the monumental one. The monumental decision was the decision I made to get out of the home state of Nebraska, because that's all I had known for those first 19 years. And so that's one of those decisions. Um, another monumental decision would have been my first marriage, you know, committing to another person, a uh, monumental decision that really catapulted the direction of my life and what that life was going to look like for several years down the road. Uh, same thing with my second marriage, uh, another monumental decision. Uh, you guys have been with me as I've talked a lot about the decision to leave a career after 21 years, 25 years, same company, 20 years, five years with another one. So 25 years in one industry. But to walk away from that industry and literally lay it down, not like dabble with it, play with it, keep in touch with people, kind of, I mean, like literally lay it down and not look back was a monumental decision. Um, for me, and this is just me and the way I operate, the bigger decision, the better. Uh, I like to challenge myself. I think that life is how I'll put it. Uh, this lifetime and this physical existence will, list, will uh, last for a certain amount of time and then the gigs up. And I want to live this one to my fulfillment. My, my, um, I want to be completely fulfilled in this lifetime. 
And if I choose, and this was some of the clarity I had on the road that day, if I choose to stay, um, I'm going to use the word stuck, com overly committed might be one. If I choose to stay overly committed to any one area of my life, then that's going to be my experience for a long, long time. And do I want a new experience? Um, after my father had passed away and I was, I was back in, I was back here and I was really struggling. I mean, I had the professional stuff going on. I had the physical stuff going on. I was grieving all these things. I was listening to Dr. Joe Dispenza. And one of the best lines he has is if you want a new, if you want a new experience, you have to make a new decision. And that really helped me because I, I can get stuck in the same old, same old, or I can get stuck in an ugly talk in the back of my head telling me how things need to be different and then not having the energy to back it up. And so sometimes a deliberate, difficult decision is necessary to have a brand new experience. And the thing about the gift of decision-making is it's a reminder that you have free will. It's a reminder that this life is your choice, that you are not held to somebody else's beliefs and ideals. Like you're not held hostage. You're just not. You may think you are, and it may look really big around you. Like, how could I do that? Or how I get it. I've made those decisions. But at the end of the day, a, a fantastic new decision in your life, and it's a difficult one, are the most free. And it reminds you of that free will that you do have. The reason why this is so important in sobriety for us is because what I have learned in my years of being sober and also working with other sober alcoholics is we are very um, enthusiastic. We have a lot of ambition. Uh, we tend to do things to extremes. Uh, it kind of runs in our nature a little bit. Uh, sometimes it's hard for us to really find a middle ground we get excited with big things. I mean, we are people who ran for the high, right? Like we wanted it all. There, you know, when you, uh, you know, jump on three buses and take a taxi cab and maybe hitch a ride to go get a, you know, drug, <laughs> you're a pretty ambitious person. Uh, I'm just saying, when we get sober, everything kind of slows down and we get all these wonderful gifts in our life, but we are ambitious. And I believe that for us, the importance of making decisions that are going to fulfill us and keep us excited is detrimental to the quality of sobriety that we live today. Um, and so that is uh, one of the reasons why I was passionate about talking about this today. All right. So having said that, um, I'm going to go take a break and we will be, I will be back shortly and I will continue the discussion on decisions. How do you get there? What happens if you feel stuck? Uh, all these different uh, things around deliberate decision-making and how that can serve the quality of your life. Be back shortly. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Know Your Crazy Show. My name is Susan Denae and you are listening to Emotional Recovery in the Raw. And today I'm talking about the necessity of deliberate difficult decisions in sobriety. And for that matter, for anybody, quite frankly, uh, the difference in what a great decision can make for you in your life and how it can catapult you to a new direction and offer new opportunities, new experiences, and really when it, at the end of the day, new joy uh, being welcomed into your life. Uh, and I shared a couple stories in the first uh, few minutes of the show, just how those big decisions have changed my life and brought opportunity uh, and new experiences and really gave me a sense of purpose. And it, I think that's kind of what we're talking about, right? Making a decision to bring purpose into your life so that you can try something new and, and be somebody different in, in a good way, in a good way. Uh, so what would limit your ability to make a decision that best serves you? I'm going to dive right into some uh, thought-provoking questions around decisions in case you got one that you're kind of wavering on, you're not sure which direction to go in. Uh, you know, there can be a lot of it said about emotional decisions versus rational decisions. There's some debate out there. I was reading up on psychology today today about there is no such thing as an emotional decision. But I don't know. I'm thinking when I got sober, that felt pretty emotional. However, their point was that at some point you've thought about the decisions before you make them. Uh, and then they drop into like analytical decisions and all these different types. But I want to talk about just what limits our ability to make a decision that's going to serve our best self. 
Number one, fear. And what is your fear about when you hesitate on a decision? Usually it'll be focused around what others are going to think or how the decision is going to impact somebody else in your life, especially for individuals who have family and have children or a spouse to consider. Uh, sometimes we will withhold making decisions that better ourselves because we're so worried about the impact it'll have on a relationship that we deprive ourselves. Uh, I was reading a couple of weeks ago about there's uh, that book, Codependency No More. And she was saying there's like symptoms of codependency. And uh, one of them, you know, you end up being uh, like super helpful and then you get super resentful and then you become the victim. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to serve. and I'm going to do all these things. And then all of a sudden the resentment kicks in because the other person's not doing it the way you think they should do it. And then suddenly you're the victim because, you know, woe is me. I got this life. I no longer enjoy it. There was a decision made somewhere in there that continues to sign up and suit up for that. And when we're unwilling to make a, a decision that serves us based on the relationships in our life, uh, because we think it's going to impact them more than us, or we've got something around that, that is just good old fashioned fear. And it can be considerate. Don't get me wrong. You know, there's a difference between you know, when I resigned from my career, I, I didn't do that just in one day and then surprise my family with it. It, it was a stair step uh, situation. But at the same time, it, I made the decision. Another one that would stop us from making a decision that's going to serve our best self is just lack of confidence. You know, lack of confidence. If I do this, what's going to happen? What if I don't pull it off? Or what if I pack up my bags and I move to another state? Well, what if I can't find a job? Uh, what, what if I have no friends? Or if I decide to go down this new career path, what if I can't do it? What if I never make the money that I used to make? What if I'm no good at it? What, what if I'm too old? All the what ifs, right? All the what ifs. And that can cause a big dose of lack of confidence. So if you're sitting on a decision for a while, you might have a lack of confidence. I once was helping a woman in recovery, uh, early sobriety, and she suffered a lot from anxiety. Uh, some some of us have more racing thoughts in the early days of sobriety than others. Some of us stay sober for a long time and never get rid of those racing thoughts. But she would call me from the grocery store because she was so overwhelmed with the decision to make. She didn't know what to get. She didn't, And she was so paralyzed by what that may do to her family if she picked the wrong thing on the item or on the shelf, right? The wrong item on the shelf. She would So she'd have to call to have me walk her through different things that she could think about or decide on. But I mainly, all I did was reassure her that she was a capable adult woman at the grocery store and that she would be just fine picking out what she needed to pick out for the family. Um, yeah. So when I'm talking about decisions and how they can really get on us, sometimes uh, things like that in sobriety can be overwhelming, let alone some of the fun stuff that I'm talking about that I think is fun is when we have a moment of clarity when we really decide to change it up. Uh, so really when it gets down to it, what is the story that you tell yourself around your decision-making in sobriety? When is the last time you changed it up? Now, for people in the rooms, I like to poke at them every now and then for people who have long-term sobriety, just to ask them how much of a good program they are working. When is the last time they changed it up? Uh, when is the last time they took accountability for their own behaviors or their own journey uh, instead of pointing the finger at, at others, that type of thing? Um, so how do you tell if you are in the need of a new decision? Well, a couple clues. You've had the same routine for a long time, and now you're starting to feel depressed. Uh, the one that I came across that I knew that my new decision that I've made is I'm just not feeling it no more. And when I'm doing it, I'm kind of irritable. I'm not as patient as I used to be. Um, I know the basics. I know the one, two, threes, but I don't feel like walking somebody through that anymore. Um, I'm more about, I want people to be where I'm at. So I'm impatient. So there's a couple of things going on within me and it's never about the other party. It literally is about your level of satisfaction and what you're experiencing right now. Um, another uh, area that might be a clue for you that you need some new decisions in your life, if you're looking to liven up your routine, you have no hobbies. You got no hobbies. Uh, nothing extracurricular for you. Maybe you go to work and you come home and you veg out on TV all day. I don't know. But if you're kind of feeling, you know, a little bit depressed or a little bit bored or and you have no hobbies, that might be a sign that there's a new decision waiting for you out there. 
Uh, you cannot, here's another one. You cannot remember the last time you tried something new or you learned something new. You cannot remember the last time you learned something new. I was uh, in Nebraska, I'm, I'm doing some real estate stuff and I was totally geeking out on understanding new tax laws and uh, LLC formations and all these things. And I was just so enthralled with it. Uh, and I still am actually, but I thought to myself, this is really cool to learn this new stuff. Um, it kind of lights you up a little bit and it makes you realize that, yeah, I need to change it up every now and then. Another thing that may give you a clue that you need to make some new decisions in your life you're jealous of other people's decisions in their lives. You look upon them with envy or jealousy, thinking that they got something that you want, but you can't get there. Uh, sometimes it's just a matter of putting yourself through the work. Um, I was talking to somebody recently where I, they really want to change, but they don't make any change. You know what I mean? They really want a new experience and they want to fit into this routine and this mold that they're in, but they're not willing to more or less do the homework that's necessary to make that happen. Uh, and so slowly but surely, the spiral downward is occurring. And it's really hard sometimes to watch somebody go through that. Um, but we get in our own way sometimes. The simplicity of a decision is, I can decide at any time to change it up. I can decide at any time to do my life differently. Um, and that is that confidence of free will that we all have. So I'm going to wrap up the show and I'm just going to leave you with this thought. Uh, what kind of decisions in your life, if you wanted to do some reflection today, over your span of, of years, what decisions in your life have catapulted you in a new direction? What did it feel like for you when you made those decisions? And when you think of your future self, what decisions could you make that will make that future self uh, feel fulfilled, excited, enthusiastic? And if you haven't in a while kind of said to yourself, what decisions in my future do, do I want to make for my future so that I have a fulfilling life? Try it out. A decision can take you from one mode of feeling and put you in another. Um, and it's why we're here, I think, is to change it up and to have brand new experiences in our life. Uh, so that is all I've got tonight, folks. Um, hopefully I will see you next week. Thank you for joining the Susan Denae Know You're Crazy show. Um, if you're looking for any type of coaching, uh, I am loving coaching sober couples right now, but any individual for that matter, if you're looking for coaching for high performance or emotional elevation, feel free to reach out to me at my website at www.susandenae.com. Once again, that is susandenae, D-E-N-E-E.com. Uh, shoot me an email off of there and I'll be in touch with you and we can talk about some options of coaching for you. All right, folks, hopefully your holiday was fantastic and I will see you next week. You have been listening to Know You're Crazy. 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 And my name is Susan Denae. We are identifying, understanding, and treating your crazy one episode at a time. Tune in to TransformationTalkRadio.com. To connect with me or Growth Spurt Your Life, please visit SusanDenae.com. That's SusanDenae, D-E-N-E-E.com. -E -E